According to the authorities, five minor rivers in central Venezuela overflowed as a result of severe rainfall, killing at least 25 people and leaving 52 others missing. According to the vice president, Delcy Rodriguez, the rain on Saturday night washed massive tree trunks and debris from nearby mountains into the hamlet of Tajurias, 67 kilometers southwest of the capital, Caracas, devastating businesses and agriculture. A month's worth of rain fell in eight hours, according to Rodriguez, and the pumps that supply the community's drinking water system were swept away by the floodwaters. She stated that finding those still buried in the town's mud and rocks was of the utmost importance, and that rescue workers and the military were also searching the riverbanks for survivors. From a Tejeria street that was underwater, Rodriguez stated, we have lost boys and girls. It is tragic what has transpired in the town of Tajurias. Three days of mourning have been proclaimed, according to President Nicolas Maduro, who also declared the area a disaster zone. According to witnesses, the streets of Tajurias, a town with around 73,000 residents, were lined with boarded up homes and were filled with mud, rocks, and twisted tree branches and dispatched rescue personnel to last Tajurias a town along the route that runs between Caracas and Valencia, an industrial city. According to Venezuelan authorities, the mudslide destroyed 317 homes in Las Tijerias and damaged another 750. Late Saturday night, as an avalanche of mud, rocks, and tree logs washed over many hillside areas in the city, residents said they had only a few minutes to evacuate their homes. Crews were using large machinery to clear debris from areas in Las Tijerias, a 50,000-person community along Venezuela's main industrial corridor, whose streets were still blocked by mud. In the meantime, search and rescue personnel deployed dogs and drones to locate buried survivors. After a major landslide in central Venezuela on Monday, rescuers used drones and trained dogs to seek for survivors as the death toll reached 34 and locals related terrifying stories of how they managed to flee the water and sludge. Goza Medina reported how, on Saturday night, water had risen to waist level and was rushing into his home in the last Tejeris community. He understood that he and his family were trapped. The 63-year-old used his refrigerator as a boat for his granddaughter by turning it on its side and opening the door. To prevent being pushed downstream by the strong water currents, he and his wife hung on to the refrigerator and fastened it to a table in the meantime. Medina called it a miracle that they were still alive. 43-year-old cab driver Armando Escalona lost his wife and son, who was five years old. He claimed that when he and his family were at a church service, they were caught off guard by the flood waters. He recalled briefly hugging his family before falling unconscious after being struck in the head by an unidentified object. When he awoke, he was unable to locate them. She was speechless, and everything happened so quickly while we were at the funeral, according to Escalona. A 58-year-old vendor, who also serves as a volunteer for a civil defense corps, Gustavo Arevalo, claimed that the town's telephone antenna was destroyed on Saturday when the waves started to rise quickly. Aravalo described the area in the town center, one of the hardest impacted areas, as as if dam water had been unleashed. He made an effort to assist others in recovering what was left of their enterprises once the flood water subsided. Authorities in charge of search and rescue claim that one of the flooded rivers, the El Pado, washed away a number of residences, businesses, and a butcher shop. The downpour also caused landslides in three other central states on Sunday morning, Rodriguez said, but no deaths were recorded. The stories were definitely scary, and the destructions weren't any less.